They couldn't find anything or anyone until someone noticed something. There were muddy footprints behind the couch. She wasn't seeing someone outside. She was seeing the reflection of someone standing behind her. Back, Back into in. the uncle's closet Back butler. Back into the closet butler. Oh, that sounds like a gay butler. <laughs> Come out. <laughs> Come, Come out, on. honey. Sashay in. We love you. Beaver. Be- oh, my God, it made me chomp. <laughs> Just, oh, beavers raided the pantry. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were quite honestly going mad. I've gone mad ages ago, babe. Yes. Welcome to episode 71 of Ghost Hans Ghost. <laughs> Don't, no, not today. Not today. Not, I know you're, I know you're trying to be playful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I, today. I can't hear myself. That's for the best, I think. That's weird. Turn your volume up, love. No, it's, I have, I can't. You can't hear yourself. Yeah. That is bizarre. Okay, should we do a bit of an intro now anyway? So we do an intro? So it's 71 and we have been haggard, knackered, fat and shattered We're on all tour. Of them. We're all of them. We're every single <clears throat> one of them. I've got like, um, I've got muscles I didn't know I had and I haven't even used them so I don't know why I feel like shit. I think because we've been sat in a car for mm. five hours. A day. We've just driven back from Manchester which was a fucking fun yeah. show. This, yeah, it was... We can't give away too much. And if, you, but by the way, if you haven't been to a ghost on live, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Oh, honestly, like, you are missing that out. That needs to be priority. It is so much fun doing them. It like is. I've enjoyed this tour so much, Me and too. the amount of Huns in the world that we've met yeah. is stunning. And you know what's really nice, all jokes aside, that our crowd is the nicest fucking yeah. crowd. Every venue we've been at, everybody's been like. Your your audience is a testament to you. Yeah. And I was so proud of everyone. I was like, oh, my little babies. And my babies. That's so cute. Um, so if you have come, thank you so much. No, <laughs> you're right. Rude. Everyone's been really lovely. Everyone's been amazing. No, yeah. even you pissed up lot. You've been amazing. Like, you know what I mean? But no one's been that, like, Larry and like... Listen, there have been some pissed people, but they've yeah, been fab. but like... They've been amazing. Yeah, we met someone as we checked into the travel lodge. She was like, I'm half cut. <laughs> yeah, bad. And it was about 2 pm. And I was, I was like, like, do you know what? That's a woman after my own heart. Gorgeous. That. Yeah. It has been nice. It's been lots of pizzas, which means Susie can't look in the face anymore. No, I can't do pizza again. I don't know what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. Uh, if it's not from a service station, I'm not bo- I'm not bothered. If it's not from a server. No, now we're on um, Poke Bowls, isn't it? Poke Bowls, yeah, because we're saying nourished. <laughs> <laughs> I had to literally throw myself out of Hannah's car just now yeah. into Azizi yeah. to have a piss because fuck me. That, that journey we've just done. I don't know how my bladder lasted, and like we didn't have a wee the whole time. Yeah, didn't didn't we briefly stopped for coffee and cigarettes yeah. for me, and yeah. then um, got back on the road. Yeah, we're true professionals. I feel so knackered. This is why I'm in the cap and the hoodie because I'm like I mm. need to hide in a ball. I should have brought my cap with me yeah. and my shades and just uh, idiota, idiota. Oh, I'm gonna go to bed as soon as this is over. Um... But for now, what we're gonna do is a listener. A oh yeah. But it's a listener story special, guys. <sighs> okay, I'm really going to take this. Go on. I can feel some warmth, you know. Warmth, that's good, isn't it? <gasps> what is it? Knight of Pentacles. Oh! Is that good? I swear we've had, we've probably is had it? Do, you wanna, do you want to throw me the boot? The Knight of Pentacles. I do feel like we have had him. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, does it make me a bad hun if I skip? the tarot bit and I was like no. well listen yeah it does actually <laughs> well each to their own do you know what I mean no it's fine just fucking listen that's all we ask of you to be honest yeah um, but I, I don't know, you're missing out because this is scintillating. No, it's, this, is, <laughs> this is podcasting goals this is the fucking the juice. airwaves are a tingling um, I can't find this motherfucker Knight of Pentacles I don't think he exists imagine Oh, God, where is he minced off to now? Minced off? <laughs> <laughs> On his little... Oh, here he is. Oh, you got him. Yeah. He's got little short legs. Short king. He's a short oh, king. Oh, my God, you're about to get preg. No. Yeah, overseer of fertility and growth. Maybe fertility and growth of our business. 
Oh, it is about maybe the we're gonna get a pet beaver. Oh, yeah, me and Susie have decided that I'm gonna get a house with a lake. And Susie's gonna I'm gonna get, get a, get beaver. a beaver. And beaver. like Susie's coming over with a beaver. Yeah, my little beaver's going to come over and have a swim in your pool. Susie's gonna come over with a beaver lake. and a beaver. <laughs> yeah, my BB. Um, your vagine and your beaver. Oh my god, I would love a little beaver. Yeah. If anyone could give me some advice about how to get one, yeah. get it in the UK. Make it my pet. Make well, it my friend. They are in the UK, aren't they? Beavers. They've been reintroduced, Hannah, yes. Yeah. In Cornwall. And we're going Fun. there. Okay. Anyway, his horse is usually huge and thick set, like his dick. <laughs> Sorry. I can't believe that book says this. No, it never. It is. Show me. It says it here. Show me. Can you not see? Show me. <laughs> you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> this, this energy is pale. This, his horse is usually huge and thick set, more suitable to ploughing than riding. <laughs> Excuse me. Into battle. His temp this is honestly Oh my gosh. This we've got like the porn tarot. Yeah, it's like sexy tarot. Sexy tarot. And um, his temperament is easy going and relaxed. He's moving at the rate of the flow because he knows that you can't hurry time. Honestly, what? this this night is a sexy lad. God, I'm in for a good time. Yeah. I, I'm absolutely not. I'm going to bed and I'm going to sleep. So stop throwing good money after bad. Cease wasting your blood, sweat and tears on enterprises dominated by people who can't appreciate you. Oh. In this instance, you would benefit the whole situation by moving on instead of being so loyal and true. Wow. You're in it for the fun. Okie dokie then. Well, um, okie dokie. Mm, would you like to kick us off? So basically, um, we're going to do a listener story special. You've sent us so special. many. I'm not joking when I say I think we have thousands. No, I'm not. It's not even like if you guys come into the show, it's been like, you haven't read out my story. Why? It's because we don't have, there's not enough podcasts in the day. And there's not enough podcasts in the week. Genuinely, this podcast is just myself and Hannah. Uh, we don't have a team. No. We don't have anyone looking at We can't at the, afford that. What happens is, we get so many in the day that at the end I go, oh, that's quite a lot, and I don't yeah. know what to do about it. We've got, we've got, yeah, we have, we have a system, but, but we're working our way through them. We are, and I don't want to complain. No, keep them coming, but please be patient with us because yes. we <laughs> it's slow. So we're going to do a listener story Lewis, special. No, Lewis never came in to help me with Lewis my headphones. Lewis hasn't come to help you. So are you just are you just um, you just podcasting blind? Yeah, you just going in raw. I'm raw dogging. <laughs> Oh. Susie's raw dog in the podcast. I don't... This episode will be called Raw Dogging. Um, no. <laughs> I don't... Spotify will be like, no, absolutely not. Um, do you want a story then? Hi, Susie and Hannah or Hannah and Susie. My name is Ash. I'm 21 and I'm a massive fan of your podcast. Yeah. I love it when they're young. You know what I mean? I love That's it when... That's really creepy. I love it when they're young. Why would you say no, it No, like I love that? it because it makes me feel like I'm young. You're not. The folks feel like I'm young and cool. You ain't. You are much you older ain't. than me. You Lots are. Older you're not. You're not young or cool. Loads older than me. My name is that. What do you mean? I've got an Alicia fleece on that's leopard now print. That, that is the epitome when, of when cool. When you point that out, that makes you not cool. What do you mean? By pointing at a fleece and going, look at this. It makes me this cool. It makes me cool. It doesn't. This is what all the kids are wearing. Look at me. I'm in a fucking corduroy cap. Oh, see. Because so you get cooler cool. than that. You're not getting. You're, yeah. yeah. Now I've ruined it. Yeah, you. <laughs> that's the game. I am a really big fan of that cap. Actually, I'm going to get one. I told you about this, that it went into the tracks and I had to buy another. Oh, God. I, I nearly threw myself in front of a yeah. fucking train to rescue this. I'm going to get, I'm going to go to the tracks and find your yeah, old hat and I'm going to come out. in with it one day with bits of leaves and old condoms stuck yeah, to it. Yeah, and a fucking I'm gonna be like, mouse. Hi, Susie. Hi. I'm not sure, considering how much we hang out, I'm comfortable with you getting the same cap as me. What do you mean? We've got the same bag. I know you sold it. I'm selling that shit on vintage. Um, haven't we got anything else that's the same? I don't think we do, do I'm going to get the same cap. You can get, I'm the get same it. Well, we'll just make sure, I'll just make sure you're not wearing it. Yeah, all right. Okay. Uh, you two are absolutely fucking amazing. You always make me laugh. Please never end the potty. It's the highlight of my week. We're only going to end when one of us dies. And if that happens, we'll still probably carry on. Yeah. By the way, I'm from Plymouth, if you want to attempt the accent. Plymouth. No. Uh, what is Plymouth? Uh, it's like Janner. It's like ja uh, Plymouth. Like Plymouth. Yeah, ja Janner. Like Cornwall, Cornwall. It's sort of, it's well, it's Cornwall adjacent, but if you call oh, them right. Cornish, they'll, they'll come and shank oh, you. Yeah. But it's similar to Plymouth. Yeah. Car no. Car Plymouth. Oh, wait, did you say Plymouth or Port Portsmouth? Mm, Plymouth. Yeah, yeah. Channer. I'm really hot, but I can't take this top off because my um titties will be no, I can't take this fleece out because uh, I can't take this fleece off because my top's inside out and the wrong way round. Oh god, god forbid. So I'm not gonna take <laughs> I'm just no, gonna look like a twat. Fine. No, I'm gonna look like a twat. I'm more I look I am um, if you feel like I'm about to faint though. Okay. 
<laughs> I do love hearing both of your accents. LOL. We're still doing that, lol. The kids are still doing that. Okay. Anyway, here's the story. It's not very long, but it sure is spooky. So, I live with my parents and my bedroom faces theirs. So if they've got their door open as I walk out of my room, I can see right into theirs. They also have an ensuite going from their room. Late one night on a Friday, I saw a dark male-looking figure standing in my parents' room. Then they walked in front of my parents' bed into their ensuite. That, do you know what? This is very similar to my yeah. ghost experience, isn't it? It was completely dark in both the hallway and their bedroom, so I couldn't make out any details or clothing. It's also worth noting that my dog, Casper, who'd been lying on the bed, jumped off and ran out of the room and downstairs when the shadow walked towards the toilet. At first I thought it was my dad, because he often won't bother to turn the lights on when he's doing something in a room or when he goes to the toilet. Side note, does anyone else's dad just hang out in the dark or is my dad a complete freak? No, my parents do. Uh, what? Yeah, they just, they can't be asked. they're just like, oh, it's fine. And I think it's like lecky, because they're from right. a different generation. Well, they, when they're sat down watching the TV or like when They'll they're just... They'll be in the dark all the time. Just cooking in the dark. They all the time. They've got two fingers between them, they've locked the other ones off. Because it's just like chopping vegetables in the dark, oh, which means. <laughs> yeah. Is that what happens? Yeah, I, I always say to them, I'm like, put a fucking light on. I was like, I don't need it. Do you know what, though? I'm not a big light gal. I'm a lamp. I'm a lamp and a candle oh, gal. Yeah, you don't overhead lighting. Come on, no, thank in. you. I'm not, I'm not doing drugs. Okay. Since I thought it was my dad, I called out, You're right, Dad? in greeting. But then my blood ran cold and I froze when I realised it was a Friday night and my dad is always helping out at a club for the kids my, held at my church on Friday nights. Spooky! My first thought wasn't that I'd seen a shadow man but that there was an intruder in my parents' bedroom. Of course that would yeah. be the worry. I know a little martial arts. Good for you. So I was preparing to go in there and kick whoever it was. I was prepared to kick their ass. I didn't want whoever it was to know that I had realised that they weren't my dad, so I started to turn the hallway lights on and then my parents' bedroom light on as I then asked once again if they were OK. Fists raised and ready for a fight, I walked into their bedroom and saw that it was empty. Nobody was in there. So then I turned on their toilet light and opened the door, but there was nobody in there either. This is literally the same as mine. Weird. There was nowhere else they could have got to, but I know what I'd seen. I'd watched them for roughly five solid seconds. My brain started replaying the moment over and over in my head, trying to come up with a rational explanation for it, but there simply wasn't one. I've always had a massive interest in the paranormal, so I knew about the existence of shadow men. I just never thought I would stare one down myself. This was a few years ago now, but to this day, every time I walk out of my bedroom when it's dark, I look into my parents' bedroom and I'm scared I'll see a shadowy figure standing in there where nobody else is home. And that is from Ashton. Ashton. Ah, it's a bit. But we haven't really delved into <clears throat> shadow men. I know what Have I... We? So, so is that gonna get us in trouble? No, no. Get, well, it's just because, like they say, mm, I know what I saw, and I'm like, yeah. do you know what? That is a lot like your one. Yeah, it is. Where you see someone also passing think through. It's more believable. <clears throat> Not believable, but I, I think your brain. I think it's less like your brain's playing tricks on you because you think it's just a person. Mm. So it's not. It's you're not in a position where. You're not scared or you're not... No, you're not, you're why would you normal... create it out of nowhere? Exactly, so then it's a bit freaking. Well, thank you, Ashton, that was gorgeous. Uh, right, this one. Hey, ladies, I hope you're both well. My name is Holly and I'm a new listener and I'm obsessed. Oh! I've always been into the supernatural and always felt I had a spiritual connection. My grandma often tells me how through the years, me and her have been able to see, sense and connect with people who have passed on. It seems to be all the women on my mum's side of the family that feel this. I have a small story I'd like to share with you. And yes, it's one please. my grandma tells me about all the time. I was younger when this happened, so I don't have any recollection of it, which in a way kind of makes me feel worse. For a bit of background context, I still have my grandparents on my mum's side. However, I never got to meet my other granddad, my dad's dad, as he passed away before I was born. When I was younger, my mum looked after me while my dad worked. So it was just me and my mum in the house. It was an afternoon and my mum was in the kitchen. And I was upstairs in my room, playing. Apparently, I came downstairs and said to my mum that I was playing hide-and-seek with a man upstairs. Creepy kids. Creepy kids. So, obviously, my mum goes upstairs to see what I meant, clearly being alarmed. By the time we got back upstairs, she searched all the rooms and she found, of course, no one. When she asked me, 
<clears throat> who it was and where he went, I turned to her and said, oh, he's gone out the front door now. Uh, but he told you, no, he's gone out the front door now, but he told me to tell you the name Curly Head. Being a child, I had no clue what that meant and neither did my mum. My mum, alarmed, told my dad later that evening what had happened and when she told him I'd said Curly Head, my dad revealed it was his nickname his father gave him when he was a little lad. Oh. As his hair was long and blonde and curly, just like mine when I was a child. I like to think that it was my granddad who I never had the chance to meet coming to visit me and meet me. Oh, anyway, that's so wholesome. It's just a small story, but nonetheless, I find it exciting to share with you. I hope your ladies, your ladies, have a fabulous week, and I look forward to listening to the next podcast. Stay spooky, Holly. Oh, that's so cute, especially yeah. after our drive because we've listened to some gruesome podcasts. I know, right? and it's not so my that mind. is nice. Oh, to Holly, have a wholesome... that was gorgeous. Yeah, it is. Started out a bit weird, and then. Gorgeous. It's nice, Lovely. isn't it? Love bit, bit of... Kids can see ghosts. Of... Do you know what? I did once have a weird. I'm just going to tell you very quickly. Mm. Um, I don't think I class it as a as a ghost story because no, there wasn't enough that happened. But when I was, I used to stay around at my nan and granddad's when my dad was renovating my bedroom because they lived next door. And one day, I felt like a, a huge breeze in the room, like a big, and it was enough to go what was that because mm. it was like someone had got a hairdryer on coals and just blew it in my face mm. it was that obvious and I had this really weird um feet I had this really weird kind of like desire to get out a photo of my brother because my nan never met him my, my dad's mum never met him and I had a really weird I just really felt like it was I wanted to get out a photo of my brother because my nan, I'm not explaining this very well because I'm so tired but my nan never met him and she always said like she loves little boys and like they're her favourites because my dad was her only child and oh. like she would have loved if my mum and dad had had a little boy and they obviously did but she wasn't around to see it. So I got out a photo, put it on my bed and just left the room and then when I came back in, it was on the floor. That's weird. But I thought it could just like if there was a draft but I don't know, I was feeling a bit like... When did this oh. happen? It's when I was about... 14. Oh, so you're in your witchy face. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But maybe that would be nice, wouldn't it? That's a, that's quite... Sweet, isn't it? Very well, I didn't expect me. that of you, actually. Very emotional me. Yeah, you, that's, that's that... Sentimental. Um, that belies a sort of sentimental witchy mm. side that hither, really hitherto I haven't it. seen. I'm getting... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what has mm. happened to well, us? When I don't, when I can't hear myself on the fucking pod, this is what happens. No, gorgeous. I'm full of, yeah. full of Stunning. it. Have you got one? For oh me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. Come on. I was like, <laughs> um, hey guys, I just wanted to say I absolutely love your podcast. I've listened to it at least four times. Oh, Jesus Christ, same. that is a big fan. And as an Australian, I must say I approve of Susie's accent. Oh. So have I. So have I. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I'll get to the story now. When I was younger, I loved horror. I had all the Goosebumps books and still do. Do you know what? I actually want to go and lie in bed and read all the Goosebumps books. So do with I. With a big mug of tea. I can't fucking wait to and do just, that. Oh, maybe I'll do it late. I haven't got any Goosebumps books with me. I fucking love them. Ghost I'm going to do it. Uh, do, Say camp jammy jam. Camp yeah, jam. yeah. Say cheese and die. Say cheese the and die. The classics. I like all the camp ones, I think. Yeah, me too. They're a bit spooky. Well, campfire... America. Um, yeah, like yes. well, that's where all the horror films happen as well. It's mm. phenomenal. Um, if you ever open a PO box, I'll send you my extras. We okay, have one. We have to do that. It's one. on our link tree. Um, oh yeah, go on our link tree. On, our, on our bio. Send us whatever you like. We'll Honestly, take it. oh my god. Please no like dead animals though, because. If we'll you send us off. a Goosebumps book, I will fucking die and go to heaven. Me too. But can you send us one each? Because it's so shit having to share them. No, I'll read it and give it to you. <laughs> no, we never do that. We say, I say to you, I'm going to lend you books all the time. I always forget. Always. Anyway, uh, behind my grandma's house, there was this big forest. And every now and then, our family would go out, create a fire and tell stories while they see, well, see, whilst eating s'mores. Oh, nice. Uh, that, sorry. Smoy, say s'mores in American and Australian sex. S'mores. S'mores. Yeah, that's good. Very good. I always beg my dad to tell this one story because it always scared the crap out of me. So here it goes. One night, a young girl was sitting in her living room watching TV way past her bedtime. Way past her bedtime. Her parents were out for the weekend and left her alone. 
As she was watching a movie, her eyes started to wander to the sliding door behind the TV. <laughs> Outside the door was a man standing there, staring at her, holding a butcher's knife. Oh, God. She screamed, ran upstairs, locked herself in the bathroom and called the police. After a few minutes, the police came and searched the entire house. They couldn't find anything or anyone until someone noticed something. There were muddy footprints behind the couch. She wasn't seeing someone outside. She was seeing the reflection of someone standing behind her. Oh, no! That story always scared the hell out of me whenever my dad told it, and my mum always got mad at, me for, mad at him for telling it. Anyway, thank you for reading. Love you guys. Oh, that's another case I of, a, that of a dad like, scaring the shit out of like I, your young kids. I my, love that. Yeah, we've, told, we've said about <laughs> this before, but my dad really did enjoy it too much. Would you like another creep of the week? Yes, please. Hey, Miss Hannah and Miss Susie. Oh, I love that. I love that. There's something quite um, sort of seventeenth century madams. Is this? Um, it's a story from America. Uh, well, Una Florent. Uh, Do you know what Una Florent could be from anywhere? That is Una. A... You are a worldwide bitch. I w- I think I that's that. American because I love it when the Una Florent, like ma'am. Or a ma'am. Miss Hannah and Miss Susie. Oh, I love that. I can't wait to go to America. My name's Una Florent, and I'm a huge fan of the pod. I often listen to it on my commute to college. America. It's America. It's America. Confirmed. We're obsessed. Um, I hope I was okay to say her name. We'll bleep it out <laughs> if we can't, but I think it should be fine. I think it's fine. <clears throat> often listen to it on my commute to college each morning, and it gets me into a great mood for all my drama classes that morning. Uh, you are born to do drama with a name like that. Oh, you, you have, have to. to. You have it to. sounds like a made-up name. Um, Fuck me. <sighs> I hate it when that happens in this room. Uh, Kat just scared the shit out of Hannah. Oh, great. Spotify yeah, lady. Okay. Thanks. Um, Spotify lady. Oh, Spotify lady. I'm sorry, that was my zip. Oh. Okay, back into Una. Um, I have a Poor story. <laughs> I have a story for you two, and I hope you like it. Yeah. This didn't happen to me, but it is a story that has been told in my family for the past few years that I find extremely interesting and one of the sole reasons that I believe in the afterlife. This story is from my dad, a Dublin man. Oh, it's America and Dublin, my two favourite things in life, who has always been a sceptic until this happened to him. My dad's mum, who was my granny, died Mm. before I was born. (laughs) 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 My dad's mum, who who was my granny. Yeah, Yeah. come on, we're getting getting into the Dublin vibe. I think it was the chaos that came with it. My dad's mum, who is my granny, died before I was born. Yeah. Three months into my mum's pregnancy, Uh, She was the only one who knew my mum was pregnant before she died. So unfortunately, I never met her. Yet, I was always told that myself and her would have gotten on brilliantly as she was charismatic, comedic, and had a good love for alcoholic beverages paired with a cheeky cigarette. That That could be me. That's literally you. I think Hannah is your grandma. Oh, reincarnated. Reincarnated. I'd love that. Her name is Florent. Uh, Oh, that yes. Yeah, everyone in the local area called her Flo. Ah, love that. Flo. Hang on. I think Florent would really suit me. Yeah. Flo also was known for always having her hair perfectly done, <laughs> no matter what the occasion. Yeah. Ooh, this is you... where it um, gets a bit... No, that's... Not no, really hyenated. sorry, can you not... Ahem. <laughs> <clears throat> What, what, do you, what do you call this? <laughs> do you call these rat's tails? <laughs> That's a bit of straw. <laughs> That's uh, rude. Hey, I've been on tour. You look like a prick. So how about that? You've got a stupid that really, face. That really got under a skin. That really did. Um, We're going to have a round now. Okay. Flo was also known for having her hair perfectly done, no matter what the occasion. She grew a deep relationship with her hairdresser, Russell. She would visit him frequently to get her hair done, as well as gossip about the local drama that had been happening in the area. Every time she'd visit Russell, he would pop open a bottle of vodka for oh, her. I love that. Gorgeous. <laughs> Pour it into a glass and she would enjoy it while he perfected her hair. Towards the end of her life, Flo started not being able to make it to the salon. However, she still managed to get her hair done as Russell would visit the house and bring along that ever so necessary bottle of vodka. Because of this, her whole family became very friendly with Russell and considered him not only her hairdresser, but a close friend. Mm. She sadly passed away from complications with her lungs and Russell, for obvious reasons, stopped visiting their family home as frequently as he usually did as he no longer had a customer there. Russell was devastated and truly felt like he lost one of his most loyal customers, but also one of his dearest friends. About four years later, 
Russell took on a new client, a young lady who was originally from the countryside, but had just recently moved up to the city for work. I believe her name was Fiona. Fiona had visited Russell one of two times over the span of a year. She wasn't a very frequent customer, but would only ever go to Russell to do her hair. On her third visit, shortly after Christmas, she came in with her face white as a ghost, sweating and visibly nervous. Russell noticed Fiona's state and brought her into the salon and asked if she was okay. After a moment, Fiona finally explained why she was so nervous. Over her Christmas break, she went back home to visit her family while she was there. She saw her sister, who she hadn't seen since she'd moved up to the city centre, she explains to Russell. Now, the first thing her sister said to her was the name Flo. She asked, who is Flo? There's someone called Flo, do you know her? Fiona explained her confusion to her sister until her sister said, Flo wants you to tell Russell to go to her house, tell the family she's okay and that she's happy. Fiona watched as Russell almost fainted from disbelief. My sister claims to be a medium, so I felt like I had to tell you. Russell, in absolute shock, explained to Fiona, who had never met Florent, and who Russell had not spoken about to anyone in three years, that she was a past customer who passed away about four years ago. This played on Russell's mind for several weeks, and he was unable to sleep or stop thinking about what Fiona had said to him. He knew it was too accurate to just be a coincidence, and that there is no way that Fiona could ever have known about who Flo was, especially because that was only her nickname, not her birth name. Finally, he built up the courage to return to my family home to tell my dad what happened. But on the day of his visit, he waited outside for an hour before coming in. He knew that my family was skeptical of the supernatural and ghosts, and yet he felt that Florent had asked him to do so and he must do it. He finally went in and told my family what happened, and ever since then, it is the sole reason why my entire family are true believers in ghosts and the possibility of an afterlife. I hope you enjoyed the story, and thanks so much for keeping me entertained. Lots of love. Una Florent. Gorgeous. That was stunning. Thank you, totally Una. enjoyed that, Una. I think Una's a lovely name. I think it's really nice. Um, Una, Uma, love them all. Anything that starts with a U and ends with an A, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Shall we do another one? Yes, please. <gasps> we don't have a name for this person and we don't have a subject, which is really creepy, actually. Sorry for how long this story is. I want no, absolutely don't be sorry. I wanted to ensure it was as descriptive and engaging as possible. This story has to do with my uncle. My uncle's home stood alone in the middle of nowhere. At first, the peculiar incidents were dismissed as quirks. First, small belongings vanishing from their designated spots, like his favourite coffee mug mysteriously disappearing overnight. I'd hate that. I fucking hate that. We've all got I've a favourite mug. I love, I love. There was one mug that my old housemate used to have, and um, oh, it was fucking amazing. And she took it with her. I thought she was going to give it me as like a bit of like a, I know you like the mug, bye. Have a nice life. But no. No. Twat. Some people aren't good people. <clears throat> so she, no, she was all right. <laughs> <laughs> just, just very medium. Um, his favourite coffee mug mysteriously disappearing overnight, missing photos, his wife's wedding ring or finding the pantry raided despite no one else being in the house. Even the eerie sensation... Beaver. Being... Oh, my God, it made me jump. <laughs> Why did you say... Oh, beavers raided the pantry. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were quite honestly going mad. I've gone mad ages ago, babe. Yes, yeah, fair. Even the eerie sensation of being watched in the dead of night was brushed off as mere paranoia. I read that as panda. I don't know why. Ha <laughs> ha. But then, the whispers of the mundane escalated into a cacophony of horror. Blood-curdling screams and chilling wails echoed through the empty rooms, sending shivers down my uncle's spine. Maybe it was his neighbours, he thought, but he remembered he lived in the middle of nowhere. The sounds... <laughs> Maybe it's my neighbours. Oh, wait. I live in the woods. <laughs> my... The sounds became accompanied by the haunting laughter of children, their giggles echoing through the halls like a sinister melody. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> 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 there you go. <laughs> I think we get the um, gist. No, I liked yeah. it. No, don't rush my laughing. <laughs> um, We're very tired. And my uncle would go to bed late that night and wake up to the chilling strains of piano music. The notes twisted Ooh. into a nightmarish song that seemed to come from the very walls themselves. As the shadows deepened, so did the presence that lurked within their home. 
One faithful night, as my uncle descended the staircase to investigate the strange noises, <laughs> a deafening crash and the unmistakable cries of a child shattered the silence, emerging from the depths of the butler's closet. Gripped by a primal fear that clawed at his sanity, he hesitated, his hand trembling as it hovered over the doorknob. It was locked, but he could hear something stirring within, something sinister and unnatural. In the butler's closet as well. This is quite a posh house, yeah, isn't it? Very posh. I didn't know there was such thing as a butler's closet. No, no, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Do you think it's the pantry or something? Because like, it's not going to be like, all right, night everyone, I'm off to my closet. Well, the butler's closet in my head is just what his a wardrobe. Oh, oh, right. Oh, that makes more sense. Where the butler lives. Uh, yeah. Well, do you think he lives in a, in a, in a wardrobe? Part of me thinks whoever wrote this has a very rich uncle who yeah, has a butler. Potentially. Um, it was locked, but he could hear something stirring within, something sinister and unnatural. The following night brought a new terror as an unknown liquid began to seep from beneath the closet door. It was thick and viscous. I hate that word, viscous. Viscous. It's like an onomatopoeia, isn't it? Viscous. With a foul odour that turned his stomach like our breakfast yesterday. Mm, Fucking crazy. Yeah, shout out to nothing. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna name and shame, but quite There honestly. is a brunch place in Jesmond in Newcastle. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what it's called. It was fucking but the horrible. fucking breakfast was disgusting. I know, it really was bad. Old really potatoes yeah. covered in oil. Can can we just have a second? Yes. Because yeah. I'm still annoyed. And I'm not slagging them off to say don't go there, we're not gonna name it because whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> I think there's like one place. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hipsters. Listen, listen, maybe we should have said something at the time, but it was so quiet and somebody was filming us and yes, that was weird. So yes. we couldn't, like we felt, it felt like we're in the twilight zone, didn't it? Yeah. And my eggs, I had poached eggs. They were bullets. They were rock solid, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. Your potatoes were fucking old. They were old and... Old grey potatoes. I, I would say a good, like... Half inch. A half inch of oil yeah. swam around that, like, fancy dish that had my yeah. potatoes and... And plastic cheese. Didn't taste of anything. And I like a plastic cheese on a burger, but... I no. upended three sachets of salt. <laughs> sachets. Sachet away. Yeah, that From place that brunch place. Yes. It was <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it was really bad, to be fair. Was there anything else? Oh, the sausage. And listen to me. I love me a sausage. Oh. There is not a sausage I won't eat. <laughs> But that I had one bite and I had to spit it out of gags. A gags. It was it was like it was off. I think it was off. We were just looking at each other from over the table, like, what do we do in this situation? Because yeah. it was deathly quiet. Three male hipsters alone yeah. sat on different tables. Yeah. One of them had his phone just like propped yeah. up. Like I know a yeah. wrist angle when I see one when yeah. someone's filming like this. Me. Like this. I mean, I know this is a podcast, but like that is not. Yeah, a it, normal... it, there's an unnatural lilt of the wrist when you know someone's filming because I've yeah. done it to other people on the tube when mm. I'm like, I see a guy man spreading, and I'm like, you can fuck. That's him. the worst thing that people can do on the tube, in my opinion, man spreading. Yeah, no, yeah. I I nudge them. I give them a kicking with the knee. Yeah, I yeah. Go, Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. Oh, yes, I might not be using that space, but that's my space. Get the out. The man spread does my fucking head. If you in. are a man out there in the put wild, put your knees together. Put your knees together. No one's cock is that big. Oh, it's not. No one's. In fact, balls we that... think it's smaller I think because it's... you do that. Yeah. If yeah? we do, no, we do. We I do. automatically look at. I go. We do. Micro penis. Micro. Micro penis. Like a micro pig, but yeah. smaller. But yeah, 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 yeah. Little. Your balls aren't big enough. Neither is your penis. Put them away. Put your knees together. I mean, I'm not suggesting that anyone is out there. <laughs> Put the cock out on the cheek. Mother probably They is. are. They yeah, do. They are. They are. <laughs> they are. It's happened. <laughs> and men, we love you, but put put your knees together. Okay, where were we? <laughs> that was a tangent, wasn't it? It always happens. Um, By the way, so we've the really un... enjoyed you bringing your boyfriends and husbands to oh, the no. show. I think we've converted they, the they, boyfriends they and become husbands. a real... Um, a part of the show, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah. You've got to come along to... Um, I, I think we're all sold the out, The Jimmys really. and the Shauns and the Are we nearly Richards. sold out for the thing, for the dates that are on seven, sale now? Seven tickets left for London. Seven. That's it. So maybe when you listen to this, there won't be any left. But I would but say, we are going to Oxford. We are going so to Oxford. So come to see us at the Oxford and if Podcast you are Festival. in Oxford, can you just drop us a little DM to let us know that you're there? Because fuck knows who is. Okay. Sorry. Back, Back into in. the uncle's closet Back butler. Back into the closet butler. Oh, that sounds like a gay butler. <laughs> Come out. <laughs> Come, Come out, on. honey. Sashay in. We love you. <laughs> um, with a foul odour that turns... So this is the liquid that's viscous. coming out, the viscous liquid that's pulsing yeah, out of the door. Plasma. My uncle made a decision that would unravel the fabric of his reality. <laughs> 
With a thunderous crash, he shattered the closet door that separated him from the unknown horrors that lay in wait. Did that, did that make a sound? Because I can't hear um, it. It did, but it sounded... Um, Awful. OK, yeah, carry bad, on, yeah. please. Um, what he found within the confines of that closet would plunge him into the depths of madness. The stench of decay assaulted his senses as he stepped into the darkness. He saw fresh footprint, footprints, impossibly small and chillingly human, oh. marred the puddles of black sludge that pooled on the floor, leading to a darkness that seemed to swallow all light and hope. And hope? <laughs> <laughs> and and hope and there amidst, amidst the darkness he found his missing belongings the coffee mug smashed into many pieces open bags of food crumbs everywhere and his wife's missing wedding ring all arranged in a display that defied comprehension the suffocating realisation that something sinister something beyond comprehension had taken root in the heart of their isolated sanctuary and as my uncle stared into the abyss he knew that he was not alone that something malevolent lurked in the shadows waiting to claim him as its next victim. Well, you need to write in and tell us if your well, uncle's all right. right. Yeah, is he okay? Has the viscous taken him? Yeah, get your uncle to write us an email. Uh, I hope he's well. Also, and... where's the butler? Oh, yeah. Who killed the butler? And with, was it with rope or the Maybe dagger? Maybe he's still in the closet. Mm. Who knows? Rope or with dagger or drain pipe. <laughs> drain pipe. One I them? love Cluedo. Me too. Isn't that so... Do you know what? One day, me and you yeah. are going to release a Ghost Hunts version of Cluedo. Could you? And I'm not even joking about imagine that. Imagine that. I, I can, actually. I love a game And of it Cluedo. would be like, um, you'd be going to have brunch yes. in the salon. Yes. And we'd have like, um, we'd have... So, like a champagne bottle yeah, as one of the weapons. Oh, yeah. We'd have Twatty Ex-Boyfriend as one of the characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, instead of Mr. Black, it's an bloke ex. in the bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, we'd have... Um, who else would we have? Um, Your sad mate who's married and has got kids. Yeah, yeah. The bar, the waiter. The drag queen. Oh, no, there'd be, so, ah. there'd be so many fucking great characters in it. Yeah, and one of the characters would just be an ex-Benedict. <laughs> yeah, just like oh, viscous just, holiday can sauce. Can I also just say, everybody, that ex-Benedict I really, really like, but I've I've tried a few now mm. since we've been on the road, and not one of them has been good. So, do, you know what, do you know what? You're quite brave for ordering it. I don't order it anymore because of that fact. No you, one could get hollandaise right. You can't. It's too vinegary. Like one place did in Clapham and I loved it there. And I just... Maybe I'll try and make my own. I'm quite hungry actually now. Mm. Okay. Okay. <gasps> I'm going to go to Pret on the way back and see if they've got that sandwich. They don't. They never do. I thought you found one. In King's Cross. Fuck. Hannah, would you like one last little story? Yes, please. Hey. Uh, hi, guys. I wanted to share this true and creepy story that happened to me and my dad a while back. It was on a Sunday in November when I went over to my grandparents, but my dad had parked the car down the street. So when we were saying goodbye, we started walking down the street to get to the car. My dad had seen that there was this little girl who looked around six to eight years old who had got her rusted pink bike stuck in a puddle. It had been raining all of the Saturday. And my dad helped the girl get to her bike and get her out of the water. And I went over and I said... Oh, I love your bike. It's really cool. It looks quite old fashioned. She just stared at me with her pale skin and dark wet hair. She looked down at her bike, so I decided to walk away and continue my way to the car. I got into the front seat of the car. My dad started driving off, but the little girl was nowhere to be found. My dad had known the neighbours for years and there's no one new in the neighbourhood, so she couldn't have just quickly ran into someone's house. And there were no bikes left outside any of the houses. My dad joked and said, I wonder where she's gone. Could have been a ghost for all we know. Mm. I laughed and continued our drive home, but something about the way she looked just didn't sit right with me. So I Googled if there's any missing kids from the area until an article popped up. It read, seven-year-old girl found dead in nearby river while riding her oh bike. My, gosh. my heart froze. That can't be her, right? I looked more into it. She was taking her dog for a walk when she seemed to want to go over to the river with her bike, but slipped and fell in. I showed my dad when we got home and he was in disbelief. We rang my granddad too to see if he knew of the girl and said, well, if he knew of the girl, and he said that he didn't know her, but that girl was in the same year of school as him. So she went missing in about the 1960s or 70s. Oh. 
I still can't believe I talked to her, a real ghost. Wow, that is spooky. <laughs> I know. That would freak me the fuck out, That would mate. freak me the fuck out. Um, should we do We Get Haunted? Or? Let's do a little We Get oh, Haunted. Oh, do you want to do a little... No, to. I think we, we should do... Yeah, we've, we haven't. We've only got yeah. four minutes. Um, okay, we have been on tour, as you know, and let me fucking tell you <laughs> that there was no need to swear there was, so there was absolutely no need. Come on, nice. you stupid bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we have been contacting a lot of spirits, and I'd like to know if we're a little bit more haunted than when we first started. We've got a little bit more haunted, so you don't have to, am I right? <laughs> I actually do think we have attached more spirits to I us. think we've got so many with our dirty Ouija board and our filthy pendulums. Yeah, yeah, no... yeah, yeah. So we're going to try the little spirit box again oh, and see what's, see what's there. So let's... So I've just got to go over here. Yeah, this looks legit. It's a photo of a ghost. <laughs> also, okay. there's a lady who works at Spotify. Shout out. Um... And she says that we've contacted so many spirits when we're in the studio that she's scared because she works literally directly oh, really? beneath us. <laughs> we're so sorry. Oh, my God. So... Oh. Yes, yeah. Oh. oh. That's like the Knight of Pentacles. Hang on. Right, OK. That's that sexy horse lad. It's the... Uh, yes, yes. Nay, nay. <laughs> 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 right, hang on. Do I have to press that? Oh, God. This is very... Oh! What? Something... Oh! Something horrible just came up on the screen. Okay, let's ask it a question. Is um what have you got any questions, Pixies? Is the Knight of Pentacles going to visit us here? Oh, what is that? Who are you? I think it might be. Are you? Uh, are, are you sexy? <laughs> are you a spirit? He went. Are we at them? Do you wish us well? What's your name? Hannah, ask something else. Are you single? Ooh. Oh, I heard a lady's oh, voice. Oh, hang on. Are we... oh, hang on. And let's ask it again. Are you single? I'm thinking of you here. Was that your wife? Oh. Do you know what he's oh, gone? You know what's happened? The We've wife. got in touch with a married man. Yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, saucy, I'll come and have a chat. Yeah. And then the wife was like, N hang on, Jane. She intercepted. <clears throat> no, you're married. Yeah. Till death do us part. I don't think so. We're still we're still attached. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put your knees together well, and Well, what off. a scandal that was. Didn't expect it, did she? Well, listen, the scandals go into the afterlife, mm. so keep oh, I'm it. I'm thrilled. Gorgeous. Keep it in your pants. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I did. Mm, me too, me too. But I am going to go time. and... Um, Pokey bowl. I'm going to go and die now. Uh, so that'll be nice. Okay, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week for yeah. episode 72. Oh, and if you can't get enough, move over to Patreon because let me tell Patreon. you. Patreon.com. We caught some ghosts. Forward slash ghost hands. And you need to go and see them. So I'll see you and next time. And check out our date for Oxford Podcast Festival. Yes. We're going Oxy. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just fucking love you, Hans. So yeah, thanks for making drugs. our hearts full in other shows. They were yes, so, so, so gorgeous. Lovely. We love you all. Bye. 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 Yeah. See you later. Absolutely stunning.